All right. Okay, everyone, welcome to the Geek Group. Uh, today is uh, March 18th, uh, 2022. And if you watch a recording, you'll be various time zones. And okay. Um, right now, topics, properties, and investments discussed are for educational purposes only. We do not sell securities. Each investor is responsible for their own decisions and must evaluate investments according to their investment risk tolerances. Opinions expressed are those of the speakers and no one else. And uh, today we're having uh, our guest speaker is Mike Desros Desrosier and his lovely wife, uh, Christine. Mike is the founder and CEO of, uh, of the Growth Capital Group. Mike has over 30 years of real estate experience and is also a multifamily syndicator focused on value add properties in emerging markets. In addition, Mike has extensive education in multifamily, asset management, acquisitions, and investor relations. Mike is a general partner in 12 multifamily properties through nine syndications, totaling over 1,000 apartments and in 60 million in assets under management. His properties are located in Texas, Kansas City, Las Vegas, and California. Mike's focus has been on undervalued properties, which over which offer forced appreciation through renovation and proper management. Mike's experience includes over 30 years as a CEO of a successful marketing agency. He is also a licensed California realtor and is and a licensed private pilot. All right, Mike. Uh, thank you for the introduction. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I know some of you had mentioned, you know, some of the training things that you're going through. Uh, Christy and I also went through Ari Mentor, you know, some uh, years ago, and um, it's, a, it's a great training. So I hope you enjoy that very much. Um, so I, I did, sh I show, I have some sh uh, slides to show for uh, kind of some of the properties that we have, and I was going to tell a little bit, talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm probably going to need some help on how to share my screen because uh, I'm used to it with Zoom, but not Microsoft. Uh, Look for that square rectangle shape down there with the arrow in it at the bottom of your screen. Yep. And okay. then it'll ask you, do you want to share the whole screen? And then sometimes um, it can be a little bit cranky. It'll open wider and you'll have to resize the window to see see people along with seeing the screen. Okay, perfect. Let me uh, get that. Give me a second here. Okay, your entire screen window. What are we looking at? So far, just you. How about, did you click on the entire screen and then say open down in the lower right? How about that? Share, we got share or cancel. Oh, here we go. Now, are you seeing my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Perfect. So yes. Uh, so this is uh, this is my bio. You pretty much read this, but this has uh, some information here on on me. I'll show this again at the end. But there's a QR code you can scan to connect with me on LinkedIn and um, my my website down below. But as I and uh, as I as I as the bio read, you know, I came through. Christy and I came through uh, with the uh, RE mentor uh, training some years ago and started off. Um, you know, we started off slow like everybody does and just took some time to kind of get started on the first deal. It, 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 uh, I came through mostly on the capital raising side and that's what kind of helped me get into that. 
and was introduced to another team that was you know successful at getting the properties under contract but was having some challenges raising capital and so that kind of was a perfect fit for me to come in and help do that and got me uh, kind of in i was uh, as a general partner on the pro on the first property i was very eager to go in and help you know their systems and help them and you know just some areas that you know from my previous experiences you know in the advertising marketing business and and they you know were, they liked that and i was they quickly kind of entered uh, um, invited me into the next property and then into the next and then I got into an, uh, another, I got into my own contract with a property uh, along with another partner and then brought them in to help kind of sponsor with us. Now uh, going, you know, as we're going through with all of these partners, so I'm a sponsor for RE Mentor as well as, uh, um, you know, helping to sign on the notes and provide uh, some guidance in that. So these are just some of the properties. This is one that we closed on um, like about a year ago. This is uh, in Fort Worth, Texas, 60 units called the Ridgemar. I'm just showing this is kind of our from our original slide deck that um, of what we were offering at the time. This was a 7% preferred return. Uh, it was a 50,000 minimum, 19.1 uh, AAR on a beautiful townhome style type property. Uh, located in a very nice neighborhood in in Fort Worth, its property is doing really well. Uh, they obviously, you know, really have half of them have garages. Uh, nobody lives on top of anybody else. They're all upstairs, downstairs type units. And uh, it was all classic. All the uh, the property was uh, built in the uh, in the eight uh, in the early '80s, and all you know the brown carpets, brown. Uh, uh, cabinets, uh, old appliances. And so we found this property and did uh, the underwriting on it. We did uh, the rent comps down the street or within <clears throat> within a mile radius and found, you know, where we could, uh, the other apartments that have been renovated were getting much higher uh, rents, about $200 per month. So it's a kind of an easy calculation and that really fits the mold of the type of properties that I like and that we'd like to go go for because it allows us to get uh, forced appreciation through renovation instead of just buying it and hoping you know the market continues to go up so we know that we can get two hundred dollars per month rent bump just by renovating the units because we know down the street is getting is getting that so if they can get it we can get it and they that property was uh, very similar to this except didn't have the garages and weren't townhomes but it's a similar vintage and kind of style and look uh, as it turned out the market's been very well we're we're now uh, we've increased those rent bumps we're now getting that two hundred dollar rent bump on non-renovated units and almost a four hundred dollar rent bump on renovated units so it's uh, it's done, it's doing really well. So we're really excited about this property, and and uh, it's uh, it's definitely a good a good a good asset to own. Um, another property that we got in into contract right around the same time is called Palm Shore Apartments down in Galveston. This is 88 units, uh, about a block away from the beach in Galveston. Uh, it is blocked. There's a big like a five-story building in between the beach and the building so it does have some protection there uh, but it's a really nice building kind of same thing a lot of classic units that uh, need to be renovated uh, galveston has just been on fire it's a like like all of texas but i mean you see it's not a big not that big of an island but when you go down there you just see cranes going everywhere they're just constantly building they're updating they're putting in some really high-end hotels and and uh, restaurants it's really a busy um busy area so we've turned uh, four of the units into airbnbs and we're capturing rents uh, higher rents that way and there's also about a mile from the hospital that's there in galveston and we uh, connected with the what's called the traveling nurse program uh, where they bring nurses in for you know maybe four months to six months at a time and we rent out uh, rent the units out to the uh, to the nurses and that's worked out really well as well that property is coming along. We did get hit a little bit by the big storm that came in um, some months ago, but there's really no damage to the real property itself. It just it has covered parking and it lifted off some of the roofs off of the covered parking and we had to replace that. 
but no damage to the actual building. So that was pretty good. Uh, this is another property. This is a beautiful property that uh, we got. Uh, it's been a while now, but this is a 60 unit class A property in um, College Station, Texas. It is uh, just about a mile away from Texas A&M. It's kind of an interesting story uh, with this. Um, the this was built by a local guy who was a local football star from Texas A&M and then went on to make some money in the pros. And so he built this kind of as his legacy type property. It was built in 2011. And but what happened is that when they built it, they put in PEX uh, plumbing into the walls. And I don't know if you know what that is, but it's, uh, you know, it's kind of the newer style plumbing. Instead of using copper pipes, they put these flexible almost look like hoses, you know, they're flexible rubber hoses and they install those and they still install them today, but this was kind of where the first round of them and they were, they were defective. So they had some little pinhole leaks that came out and it started flooding in some of the units. There's four units that was unlivable on the bottom floor just because of the, uh, the they went in and, and uh, you know, were able to cap it off, but there was damage to it and Basically, the entire building needed to be done. So you can imagine that's a big job, right? To go in and, and you got to rip out pretty much all the walls and every single apartment where the plumbing is and turn around and replace all of that plumbing. So this property actually sat on the market for a while. Everybody's really scared of it, scared of it. But uh, kind of goes into another uh, subject that I also like to talk about is just picking partners and you know picking the right partners to to get into some of these properties. In this case, my partners were. A, a team that actually is uh, on, on several of my properties, uh, and he comes. The it's a man or woman. The man comes from a he's a gen, comes from a general contractor background. He had a contractor's license, and then the woman is a realtor. They're not married. They're, I mean, they're married to separate people, but they met actually some years ago. Started flipping houses, and they met at a business meetup thing and started flipping houses. And they did probably fifteen of those or so, and then got into also Ori Mentor and and. Um, uh, came through that system and quickly scaled up with uh, getting into the multifamily. And but again, they were you know they were great at getting these under contract and finding these kind of finds like a jewel, just like this property, because he was able to go and analyze this and it didn't scare him, right? So it scares most people to take a property and where you know you got to rip out every single wall in a in this kind of a building and replace it, but. Uh, he's actually a plumber, came from the plumber uh, uh, side of the contractor world, and so was easily able to figure out the cost of that and was not scared to take it take it on. They, um, it was a um, $5 million purchase. Um, they had a million dollars set aside for CapEx, uh, but we already got a free appraisal for $7 million uh, after that was done. So just taken over day one, we knew we made a million dollars on the property, which is pretty amazing. And as it turned out, we were able to get it even uh, get it done for about seven fifty. So it was even less. Uh, it's a great property. It's you know going to be uh, and believe it or not, it's in an opportunity zone. So it came out and on, on, it fits under that category as well. And we have a section on the other end where we can actually build another uh, size property and put in another twenty four units. So well, this has kind of been a fun, fun one to be a part of as well. Uh, this uh, next property is this was this is a 426 unit apartment complex in um, Kansas City, and it's actually in Independence, Missouri. It's and it's actually three different properties, but they're all like within a mile apart from each other. Winter Place, uh, Meadowbrook, and Hudson. And this is kind of an interesting story too. So this property was. Um, uh, it was in contract with my partners who were boots on the ground in Kansas City, and they placed uh, the yellow eye out and they got into best and final on the property, but they did not get the best and final. And this was pre-COVID, just, just before COVID. So the winning bid went to an operator in uh, New, out of New York City, and they were all excited about the property. But as soon as it went under contract and they took it, COVID happened. And as we all remember, when COVID happened, like you couldn't, I mean, everything froze, right? And so they could not get down to the property to do due diligence. 
they couldn't get anybody out there. They couldn't get the pro, you know, they couldn't get the property management company. They didn't really want to go. They, you know, they couldn't enter, uh, you know, enter all the units without, uh, you know, kind of a firestorm there. Plumbers, electricians, I mean, nobody really wanted to show up uh, for that kind of thing at, at that first, especially that first month or two when COVID happened. So they backed out and then they, uh, the broker contacted my partners on the, in Kansas City and said, well, you weren't the highest bid, but we'll take your offer if you want to take it because we know that you can get in there and get it done. And that's exactly what happened. So we were able to get a, a bargain on the price. Uh, this was a $25 million purchase, about a $7 million raise. And uh, both Christy and I raised capital for this uh, project and got into it as a, as a general partner as well. So, and interesting enough, so they underwrote this uh, property and it's a $25 million purchase and it was going to be a five-year hold um, with a $30 million exit, right? After, and again, a lot of renovations, a lot of work, uh, you know, would need to be done to this property to get it to that point. And it's been challenging, you know, with COVID and trying to get in, get con contractors. I think, you know, anybody, we all, we all know the same thing. It's just challenging to get, get workers, get, a, you know, appliances, get cabinets, get everything. It's, it's, uh, everything's been slow and difficult, but um, we just were, we're now entertaining an offer at the $30 million price point. Actually, it's $31 million and you know for for an exit and it's only been you know two and a half years yeah two years or so so we're taking a look at that and we may that may end up happening it's been been a, a pretty frenzy market in in uh, in multifamily everywhere and in you know in, in kansas city has never really moved a whole lot it's kind of been one of those markets that stayed stayed pretty flat which has also been a a good place to kind of a safe bet because you know if it doesn't go up too much it certainly can't go down too much um but it has seen some appreciation uh this is another property called uh it's a two property portfolio called the one is called the grove uh, which is in conroe texas and then live oak which is in huntsville texas uh, conroe is about 30 miles north of houston fast growing city it's still commutable to to Houston, and so there's a lot of growth going that way, right? Going from Houston, driving from Houston to Dallas, you're you're heading up that direction, and then Huntsville is about another 20 minutes past that. So these are again uh, one the the actually the Grove is is all been renovated, um, so we're just doing turns and and you know paint and repairs and as we're as we're um, uh, turning the tenants, but uh, it's such a fast growing city that we're already seeing uh, quite a bit of appreciation in, in rent growth and uh, and in value. And the Huntsville property is all classic. Huntsville is one on the right there and Conroe's on the left and the um, uh, 73 units total and combined. So it's going well. Uh, this is another property that uh, we closed in just in October. It's called the 1911 Apartments in Waco, Texas. Um, we just, Christy and I just went there just uh, when we went to the wedding in Austin, we drove up to uh, to take a look at the property. Christy was very excited. We went to see uh, Magnolia and look around for Chip and Joanna Gaines, but we didn't, we didn't meet them. But uh, they had a, definitely had a festival going on for uh, Magnolia there. It was kind of fun. But we went in and, and we were able to go through the, um, uh, go through the apartments that were being renovated and seeing kind of the work that's been done. The two buildings on the left are townhome style type properties and the ones on the right are, are uh, apartments, but they're all, it's a combination of uh, one, two, three, and even four bedroom units. And uh, we're also looking at building another building in this parking lot here in the kind of towards the bottom. You can see it's a lot of space there. Uh, we're we're contemplating whether to do that, but at this point we're we're filling it up. This is also an interesting story. I mean, this this property was um, uh, also on the market for a while, and it had a um, an eighty five percent occupancy. And as you know, that's hard, very hard to finance. I mean, you got to get a bridge loan or a special loan to to try to get uh, a property like that with low occupancy. 
And it was just due to management. The management had been owned by the same owners uh, for quite some time, since the 80s. And they are also in their 80s. I think there's three owners and they're just they're in their 80s and they kind of just stopped caring. They were, I think they're based out of California. Um, but they, the management company was just saying that they were not getting any response from them. They would try to get things fixed and they just wouldn't, you know, take like two weeks to get a reply. And they were just having a hard time getting anything done. So they kind of stopped the property management company just kind of stopped showing the apartments because they couldn't get them, they couldn't get them turned. They couldn't get them cleaned, um, you know, good enough to, uh, to be presentable. And so they kind of stopped showing them. So the occupancy went down. So it's just an opportunity for us to come in. Uh, we were able to actually get it under um, under a management uh, a master lease uh, prior to closing to get and, and aggressively got in there and cleaned up some of the units and got it rented and got it up to the 90% where we could get financing for it. We have to do that before we close on the property. But we're excited about that. Um, this is also 1911. It's the same property. You can see it has a, a semi-covered swimming pool here on, on the right. And these are some of the interiors of it. And this is Lubbock Square. So Lubbock Square we closed on last week. This is 124 units in Lubbock, Texas. Um, very nice property. It uh, goes back there amongst all those trees. That's the apartment. It's uh, apartments and townhomes, and it's also uh, one, two, and three bedrooms, uh, and and a, and a couple four bedroom units. It has a nice swimming pool area, a nice gym, uh, laundry room, beautiful office. Uh, but it's a C class property, but it's in a B class neighborhood, and we feel it's, uh, we can bring that up to certainly a B, uh, uh, at least a B minus. We'll be doing the renovations through the um, of all of the units. Many of them are classic. Some have been reno renovated, but most have not, and uh, just mismanaged. So we have a, a value add play as well as a, a management play to uh, to go forward with that. Well, thanks, Mike. I'm a part of that. <laughs> You're part of that. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Good. Um, these are the returns, just kind of showing as a ten million two hundred and fifty thousand uh, uh, price tag, one hundred twenty four units. We were offering nineteen percent uh, projected returns, and as a three thousand, I mean, I'm sorry, three million dollar uh, equity raise, and we're real excited about it. Yeah, we're close. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> we're to to all that were part of that. It was it was a long haul. It took us a while. We definitely had some financing issues and lender issues and the seller issues and it was just took we kept doing extension after extension but we got it done and had our first management call on it today with the property manager and everybody's really excited to take it over and and uh, get the things done that we want to do and i think it's going to be fun um so this next one here is a property that we have in contract um, we are not offering it at this point because we're still in the due diligence stage. So I'm just putting that claimer out there. I'm using this as a case study. Um, but uh, it's also a beautiful property in Houston, 168 units. It's uh, called the Dover Point Apartments. You see this kind of beautiful swimming pool area and uh, just very nice uh, structure of the, of the apartments. Uh, we have some value add uh, opportunities here where a lot of units have are, um, are also classic and need to be renovated so kind of fits right into our mold the nice uh, area um, of houston uh, school districts are good um, and uh, there's multiple buildings of there's a class a building right across the street that they had built and another certainly a strong b property right uh, on the other side of the street so we're excited to take this one to uh, the next level as well. These are some of the other properties. And you see this this um, upper right is the office area as you're walking in. And the lower left is the office. Just that's right right when you walk into the front door, the entry area. And then the bottom right is one of the renovated um, kitchens. So we're going to be putting in granite countertops and probably doing uh, you know white or uh, stainless uh, appliances, 
not stainless steel, but stainless color. Uh, stainless, pro we have, we get, you know, they dent really easy and scratch really easy. So we, we kind of like the, the, um, it's a, like a painted silver that goes, uh, that looks really nice, but is much easier to clean. And uh, that's kind of my presentation on the properties. I hope that's, uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing that, but here's my information again. Um, Please go to my go to my website at growcaptoday.com. You can sign up to our newsletter. Uh, you can scan this QR code. It connects with LinkedIn. And yeah, I'm happy to communicate with anybody at any time. As I said, we sponsor deals and are always looking for you know partners and properties and and uh, you know even just helping really in coaching. That's that's definitely a, a, a strong part of it. So I think I'll finish up with that. Um, and anybody, do you have any questions? No, I, have I have a question. Mike. Okay, sorry. Are we back? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry. I'm a little off thumbs when it comes I, to the, some of this. I saw where um, you had the 85% occupancy in one of the properties. And, yes. and uh, um so I was surprised to hear that you went in and uh, um, get it up to 90% before you have control over it. How is that? Yes. You know, I can tell you that, um, you know, people ask me all the time, like, how do you get into so many deals, right? And and it's, it has been very fast. I and mean, honestly, a lot of these deals have come quickly over the last, really just the last 18 months or so. It's been, you know, pretty fast and furious. But the answer that I say is that you just, you know, sometimes you got to work backwards on the property. Like if you find a property that you really like, it's in a nice area, it has good bones, it's good, you know, you can see the story, right? We all talk about the story on the property and it has a good story and it, and it's just, it fits your mold. But, you know, the price is too high or it has this or it has that or whatever. You, you know, you kind of, you've got to work backwards. So you take it and you say, okay, what, you're talking to the broker, you know, you try to get the whisper price from the broker. What will it really sell for? They're usually pretty honest with you. I mean, within a point, right? I mean, you kind of have to read through the lines sometimes, but you know, they just want to sell the property, right? And if, and if the property sells for a lot less than what they tell you is the whisper price, it, it kind of ruins their reputation a little bit, right? So um, they, 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 it's, it's it's fairly close so if you start working with that price and you start to work backwards and you try to figure out you know it's like how can i get how can i make this property work and like in that situation a lot of people just look at it and go well it's, i can't get financing on that so how am i going to do it so that was our solution our solution was you can um we we you know you could they they're going to have the same problem selling it to anybody right unless somebody comes in and pays cash for the property which is not likely it's possible, but not likely. Um, so, you know, as we started talking with the broker and, you know, just started negotiating back and forth and the sellers were, you know, willing to do that with us. And because we told them, we said, and, you know, we'd like to buy the property. The property is a perfect fit for us. You know, we'll give you this, you know, the price for it, but this is what we need to do in order to get the financing. So we need to be able to go in there and clean up some of these units and rent them and uh, get the occupancy up so we can get a loan. And we were very confident that we could do that because we, again, did the rent comps. We knew we were under market. Uh, it's, you know, it's walking distance to Baylor University. It's a great location, you know, great structure. And, and uh, so we, we really wanted it and we felt we could, we could do that. And we did. Awesome, awesome. Sound like a property that I have. I sell regular real estate and uh, um it was an auction and i had to go in and get the water tank fixed and uh, i'm like i'm sorry but we are gambling it if you want a house you're gonna put your money in before you get it and they were like oh come to get this hour and they said we, we need some bars on the back door i sent a carpenter in there put some bars on the back door <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but yeah. Hey, the inspector went back and the bars were there miraculously. 
<laughs> nice. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Sometimes, you know, you, you got to think outside the box, right? You, you're, you're trying to put a round peg in a square hole and you just got to keep figuring it out. It's like doing a Rubik's cube. It looks Rubik's cube. Mm -hmm. It looks impossible at first, but you know, it can be done. And the more you do, the easier it is to do it. Okay. Thank you. Well, and, and, I'll be sure and, calling on you. <laughs> say it again. I said, I'll be sure calling on you. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Thank you. I'll look forward to that. Okay. Yeah, and it's just you know it's about you know it's also about surrounding yourself with a really good team. That's that's you know really been. I mean, I can't take the I can't take the the you know all the credit for all these properties. Really, it's been you know getting in with partners with really good teams that have good talents and are able to you know find these these uh, solutions, and which usually just comes from experience. And, you know, like the this uh, College Station property, like I said, most people would have run run from that. But uh, with the right partners, you can get it done. What would you say is your market area that you prefer to farm in? So my first building is in Las Vegas that I bought, and I really like that Vegas, that Vegas market. And I am looking some at some additional property there. Um, but, uh, because I was drawn into all these properties in Texas, so now Texas has kind of become, um, you know, my main market, you know, now we have so many properties all around the state that we get into contract into another property in Texas. It's just kind of like turnkey, right? We have all the, we have all the boots on the ground. We have the property management, we have the contractors, we have, you know, we know the insurance, we know how the, you know, the state operates and taxes and you know all those kinds of things so it does make it a lot easier than going into a new market and what would you be um what would be your um unit amount uh unit amount mm -hmm. uh you know i'm i mean it depends on what i have to do honestly like i mean i i i of course like the larger deals everybody likes the larger deals and and uh, that's just because there's more you know kind of more meat on bones right and so you can you can really surround yourself with a really strong team and experienced team and there's enough money for everybody to make on it, right so it attracts the team and attracts the investors honestly the it was easier for me to raise money on the 426 unit property than it is in some of these smaller properties it's uh which sounds kind of crazy but you know investors that have money they like those big you know those big projects it makes them feel good it gives them some kind of good bragging rights and you know <laughs> and, uh, they they're attracted to that as well um but uh you know if, uh, but i have also sponsored some smaller deals as well um you know in the 50 you know unit range i don't tend to go much less than that only because you know a 50 unit property is pretty much the same amount of work as a 450 unit property. It really is. You're on a you're on a weekly phone call with a property manager. You're you're you know dealing. You you know it's one closing. It's one you know capital raising. It's getting all getting the uh, financing together, insurance. You're dealing with all kind of the same problems, and really in the bigger properties, you also get a much higher caliber property management company, as you can imagine, right? You're gonna you know you get a 400 or even a, even just a hundred plus unit property, you're pretty much getting the top tier property management companies. And many of those won't touch the smaller ones. There's plenty that will, but you're getting kind of less experienced uh, property managers on the smaller properties. So the big, yeah, and I see the difference, right? And the big, the big property managers, they don't really come to you with problems. They come to you with you, they come to you with solutions. And it doesn't matter what it is, you know, there's a fire in unit 1411, but this is how we're going to fix it. Right. I mean, if that, um, versus somebody that's like, doesn't have the answer. And then you, you know, you have to kind of make the decisions and they have all the systems in place. They have, you know, a lot of people that work for them, boots on the ground, people that can kind of take care of issues when, when needed as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Hope that answers your question. And also yeah. in the markets though, I, I do like the Southeast as well too. Uh, I just haven't, you know, we were looking at a property in Atlanta uh, or north of Atlanta. Um, and, you know, we're looking at some property on Florida. So I am kind of all over up there. I just don't have anything at this point. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Darnell? 
Uh, yeah, uh, I actually got uh, two questions. Uh, short question first. Uh, could you repeat again uh, when you said uh, the minimum units that you uh, look for? Um, again, it depends on what I have to do. So I guess the point what I'm saying is that um, like if you had a smaller unit of say 50, 40 or 30 units or something, right? And you brought that to me and wanted me to sponsor the deal for you. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you can kind of do everything, you know, you're, you're, you can come up with the capital and you can come up with the, you can run the property. You have some boots on the ground, either you're the boots or you have a partner that's boots. Right. Um, then, you know, I mean, I'm happy to help. I absolutely want to help regardless of the money. Really. I, I, I do like to help. Um, but uh, if it's, you know, if you don't have all of those things, then it's kind of too much work for me to, take on that kind of size of a property because like I said, I'm, I'm going to spend, when I get into a property, you know, I'm all in, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's all in until closing. And then, but even after closing, obviously you're, you know, it's, you're all in until, until exit, but um, it's a lot of work regardless whether it's a 30 unit property or, or 300 unit property. Um, so if I'm not having to really do a lot of the work, I'm happy to help and sponsor to help, you know, bring the net worth or bring the, you know, sign on the loan um, um, and help, you know, with the guidance. Mm -hmm. But if uh, if I'm going to have to go in and kind of do a lot of the work, I like the larger properties because then it's more, you know, more profitable. That makes sense. sense. Uh, the other question I had is um, with all the experience that uh, the two of you gain uh, from the success you've had up to this point, if you were to start, if you how I'm trying to say this. If you were starting today, knowing what you know now, is there anything you would do different? Yeah, great question. <laughs> you know, I, boy, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, if you That's don't mind. Point. The one Please. thing that I, I noticed, um, not to be a backseat driver because I'm still, you know, working at a W2, but uh fear. When we when we took classes in 2018 fear paralyzed us because we didn't have a sponsor. We didn't have a, a asset manager. We didn't have a professional underwriter because we were still so new at it. And it was, it was very scary. And so we, it, it kind of paralyzed us for a, a year or so. We kept trying to like do little bits at a time, but I would just say, if you find something and I would scurry to find, if you find a property, scurry to find somebody that can help you. You have, there's so many resources out there now. Uh, Mike is a great resource. He has all of the contacts for anything, anybody you would want on, on a property. And if the numbers work, don't be afraid and just and just go for it because you'll have people there to support you and help you through this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's great advice right there. That's uh, that's exactly that's exactly uh, the what to do. I mean you. We start off that fear factor is what stop, stops us all, right? And and um, when you're starting out and you don't have the contacts and you don't have partners and you don't, you know, it seems very uh, distant. But uh, it is a very small community of this as uh, such a big business for multifamily and you know so many, you know, hunt billions of dollars, right? Um, but it's really a small industry, and you really find out quickly there's. You'll hear the same names over and over and, um, you know, certain groups that are really, you know, doing well and doing successful. It's gotten harder, too. There's no question. I mean, it's the cap rates have compressed. It's a very feverish market right now. Um, you know, I bought a building down in Las Vegas my, for my first building. And it was, a, it was a small building. And I just wanted to go, you know, this was like right at our mentor camp. And because I, you know, I was, I was really, there's multiple things that were, you know, gain or I, uh, aha moments for me, you know, one, the beginning was just like, how are you supposed to run a property out of state and not even be there? Right. I've always had single family uh, rentals my whole life, but they've all been in my backyard primarily, right. Or a house that I lived in. And then I moved out and got another one and I just rented it out. And that was kind of the way I operated. So it didn't seem, you know, it just, it, it was at first, it just didn't seem possible, but obviously they're teaching you that. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, so I picked Vegas because, you know, Vegas, I can be on a flight from California, you know, San Francisco area, right. I'm, 
I can be on an early AM flight out and, you know, be there all day long and fly home. I'm home for dinner. And my wife says, where you been? I said, in Las Vegas. <laughs> no, it's not, that's my running joke there. But, um, uh, you know, it's just close and it's easy to get to and cheap flight Southwest, right? I can get back and forth and I can get a lot done in a day and then really be right back home. And, and I found out quickly, it's easy. It's not hard to run it, run it out. And I, and I self-managed. I mean, I just, I, I wanted to, I wanted to go in and feel the pain. I mean, that's just kind of the way I do it. Right. It's like, if I'm going to go out and raise capital amongst my friends and people that I know, and, uh, you know, other people that are, you know, and they're going to trust my money, I'm going to, I'm going to know what I'm doing here. And, and, so I wanted to feel all the pain of like, you know, our tenants really going to be calling you all night long and, you know, the clogged toilets and powers out and this and that, and, you know, all that kind of thing. And it just really wasn't that bad. So it was manageable. And um, then that kind of quickly gave me some confidence to go into some of these larger units because then it's a no brainer, right? Now you go into a big property and you got a property manager who's handling all that stuff for you. And then you have, uh, you have partners that are bringing in, you know, to, that have more experience than you and you're able to learn from them. And it just makes the whole process uh, much easier and you gain confidence. But but ultimately, I mean, if I, you know, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have gone big, my, you know, very, very right out of the gate, but I should have. I mean, I, you know, so that's my advice that I that I uh, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was too scared myself. And um, but as it turned out, it turned out just fine. And the, I mean, the whole thing of multifamily is amazing, right? I mean, I know, you know, you all know the same thing. It's just an amazing business, amazing industry that that, um, you know, I wish I would have started when I was in my 20s, man, that would have, you know, been an amazing ride. But um, as the more you get into it and the more you learn and get educated on it, the more confidence you have. And uh, it just, it, it starts to, to roll. Thank you. Was that it? You said you had two questions. Was that, was that both questions? Oh yeah, I asked, I asked the first and second question. Thank you. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> All right, Max has a question. All right, Max. All right. Yeah. So, you know, first, I just wanted to say that both Brian and Rebecca have been on the call before as sponsors. So good. Excellent. Um, yeah, we know that team. And uh, Tarina is a good friend of ours who's been in the geek group, too. So we kind of it's a small world where everybody circles around. And then mm -hmm. I was going to say that one of our students underwrote uh, 1911 oh, and really? <laughs> submitted an LOI on it. Uh, so. <laughs> you know, that was, and I, and I think we were actually through, uh, Greg, uh, Donahue, I think we were actually looking at the college station property too, back then, um, we mm -hmm. were, we were kind of in the running for that. So it's always disappointing and not for me, obviously not disappointing for you. I I'm glad you got it, but you know, when you see the properties you underwritten and, and, and offered on, and then, you know, there they are, somebody's going to buy them and, and they do work and, and. You, you're wondering, you know, well, why didn't you try harder you know, on that property? But but I love your story. It's really exhibits kind of that idea that you're you, you're going for the property that's got some sort of problem with it. And that's what allows you to buy it. So I think that's a, a, a key lesson. Even in the tough market, these opportunities keep presenting themselves. Um, I'm curious, you know, about your story in terms of I think it's very motivational, just the idea that you know, fear is is definitely a factor for all of us in in learning a new a new business, one where we kind of question, can we really make it? You know, is this really for me? We kind of go through all those self self uh, um, uh, problem analyzing issues as we go through it. But I'm curious about how much you know. I always ask our our guests how much have they spent on education and. Uh, through the different programs they've been in and and i wonder if you could do a lump sum number of how much you've spent in education over the years you know learning maybe this or what's built up to this and and that kind of thing what's your what's your thoughts on that yeah i know yeah that was a tough one for me and you know christy knows that right i'm not one you know like even going through these uh you know the, the first re mentor seminar right and they're they're heavy on that sales pitch, you know, to sign you up on all of these things. And 
I've always been the guy sitting in the, you know, I'm the guy with the back, back of the room with his arms closed, you know, in the timeshare presentation saying, no way are you getting my money, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I left without buying it. And we did get, we actually, we piecemealed it, like instead of just buying the whole enchilada right at first, right? Then with the coaching and everything else, we went into the, uh, we did buy into the multifamily millions, which even then it took me a couple of weeks to make that decision to do that. And then went to the immersion training, it took me a couple of weeks to make that decision. It was not easy, um, uh, which is, you know, cheap in the big picture. But I kept, you know, I kept loving what I was hearing and I was not hearing anything that sounded, you know, any BS to me. Right. It's so it was uh, it was very um, uh, eye opening and. And then uh, we spent some time uh, going through because I, you know, I also had a, a W two job or not W two, but I, own, I have my own business. It's a marketing advertising business. I've got a small business, you know, five people. But and it, uh, I still have that, although it pretty much runs on autopilot for myself right now. I've given up kind of all my duties with that. I'm pretty much full time into the real estate. But I was really scared of taking my time and money and putting it, you know, and then, you know, it's like robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? And I figured. Uh, cause, uh, you know, but, but I, I, again, I gained confidence as, as I went through these different classes, we started following some other, you know, the other, uh, education people, Neil Bawa and, you know, um, Michael Blanc and, you know, some of these different, uh, education systems that are out there getting more educated and, and smarter about it and just more confident. And then we met a, a partner of our genie and chip that, uh, were partners on the Ridgemar property. And we met them at a Neil Bawa event, and they um, were came out of the um, Fortune Builders camp. They hadn't even done uh, RE Mentor, and then we, but we kind of partnered up, started zooming. This was during you know, beginning COVID, and then we actually took on the coaching program and split the cost of the coaching program, and did that for for a year with Jeannie Orlowski. It was amazing, right? And um, you know, just the, I think the biggest thing I got out of all that was the connections. I mean, uh, you know, Jeannie especially, but I'll already mentioned they just they really do have a, a great amount of connections and their their events, their live events. And I met partners. Um, I met, you know, Brian and Rebecca. Actually, Brian and Rebecca were introduced to me by one of the instructors from Ari Mentor. And that was the team I was talking about. For those of you who don't know, and that they, uh, you know, Brian is a contractor and, and Rebecca's a, a Real, realtor and, and a property uh, appraiser. And they were both really good. You know, she knew how, she's a great underwriter. She knows exactly how to, you know, uh, uh, write the deals and, and talk to the brokers and underwrite the deals. And Rebecca, I mean, and Brian is, you know, terrific at the value add component. He can go to a property and really just size it up just by walking the property and seeing, you know, what it's really gonna cost to get to fix it and get it all right. And has the confidence to get all that done. But they weren't really good at capital raising and that was kind of their weakness they just didn't have that part of it and so the instructor introduced me to them and said you know because he had i was talking with him and i and i was frustrated that i hadn't got into my first deal and and he said well you know what are you good at and i said well I, you know i think i could raise capital i mean i definitely i like that and and i come out of the marketing advertising world so i'm kind of used to that type of, uh, of environment and he said, well, I might have a, I might have a team that I could introduce you to that and pretty much, you know, explained it. And sure enough, we got on a phone call. Actually, Christy got on the call first right out there in the lobby when <laughs> at the event. And uh, then we ended up doing a Zoom call later that night. And, you know, it's not instant, right? You have to like it takes some time to get the relationship going. But, you know, I was able to raise. Uh, kind of for the first deal and i didn't raise a whole lot but i raised some and 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 but i certainly put forth a lot of effort uh, to them and their team to help them out you know regardless which uh, because it felt for me it was like i was being educated just you know dealing with the, with them they really liked that and so they got into another deal and then they brought me into that deal and then i got introduced to another team which is the team that was in uh, 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 kansas city on this big 426 unit property. And uh, Christy and I raised a little over a million dollars for that property. And that kind of, that was kind of that what, at that point is where it kind of set, uh, you know, it was different because that news travels fast, right? All of a sudden, you know, <laughs> you raise a million dollars, you're everybody's best friend. <laughs> Everybody, 
everybody wants to get to know you, right? And I mean, and I don't take that lightly, but um, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's a two way street. But so it's it's really accelerated a lot since then, and uh, now it's to the point where you know I get more deals coming to me than I know what to do with. I mean, I have to, I have to, I turn most of them down. I have to, you know, and and it, it's a great feeling because you're able to pick the ones that you like and the the partners that you like and you know, spend, uh, you know, time on, on the things you like to do. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Frank, uh, Frank Charmaine has a question. Yes. Um, I kind of hear your answer already, but I'm thinking about, um, the, how the Lindo team talked about the Holy Trinity a lot. And if it doesn't match up, um, they don't really endorse that deal. But I've seen where there are um, apartments advertising out there for way under that Holy Trinity. How would you say um, you'll, you'll kind of size up that deal and think that you can go for it and see if you can bring the Holy Trinity up to your standards? Yeah, yeah, great question. I know I, I struggled with that myself in the beginning. And, you know, I mean, Charmaine, I, I just, and I hope Jeannie's not listening to this. <laughs> Is she going to listen to the podcast? No, um, you know, the Holy Trinity kind of really doesn't exist in this world uh, right now, the way it is. And it's just really true. I mean, an 8% cap rate, 12% cash on cash return, 1.2, you know, that, it's just, it's impossible. Uh, they, they are out there and I've seen them, but I've seen them on like, you know, drug border towns, you know, down in Mexico, the border, you know, the border, the drug, drug towns on the other side and things like that. So you're not, you know, it doesn't work. Um, but, uh, you know, two things. And, and, you know, the Holy Trinity that they developed, that David Lindahl came up with, that was really developed back, you know, 15 years ago. And that was truly, uh, a, a, you know, that those were great numbers and they were obtainable back then. There's no question about it. And when David wrote all his books and did all his things, he's a very knowledgeable guy. And, um, uh, yeah, he... Uh, so, you know, it, it's a, it's kind of a standard that you go by and the way I look at it is like in today's market, if you can get it to the Trinity in say a six month period, right? So that's how you kind of work it backwards, right? The cap rates are crazy, right? Four and a half percent, you know, probably average, you know, everywhere, but if you can, if it's especially if it's a value add property and you can take over possession of that property and you can quickly start renovating units and bringing up the income by renovating them and then raising the rents, right? You figure if you can raise rents 200 bucks a unit and on a hundred unit complex, you know, if you could go in and renovate four units a month, so you're gonna have four empty units, right? Which is 4%, that's not, that's not gonna kill you. Um, but if you can turn four units a month, you know, in six months, right, you've got, you know, 24 units that you've now renovated and raised the rent by $200 per unit. So you're raising the income quite a bit in six months. So if you could look at it that way, it's like, okay, well, you know, we take the price we're paying now and then what the income is going to be in six months. Now let's do a calculation. And if we can get it close to that Holy Trinity, uh, you know, that's, probably doable. Um, you can also do things like, you know, delay investor returns. You know, there's a lot of, you know, uh, in, you know, upfront and, and investors don't, a lot of times they don't care about that, right? I mean, you, they're not really buying, they're not putting their money in here to get in immediate returns, right? They're really looking at the bigger picture. So, you know, we've delayed returns, say six months to the investors. I mean, just tell them that upfront, say, look, we're going to, you're still making your prep, you know, whatever that is, 7% or whatever but you're not going to be paid that until we either sell or refi, right? So you're not, we're not going to distribute it. And we tell them the reason why is because we're taking over the property and we want to, we need to reserve all of our cash for renovating. And, um, and then, so we don't have to pay those returns for six months. So that also makes it easier to manage and, you know, holding on to cash. So if you have a solid business plan and you're doing a good underwriting and you're, you're looking, you're looking at solid rent comps, that's that's the real key, right? Is find out what the competition is doing. If they can do it, you can do it, right? You find a an asset that's within a mile radius, or what all the assets in the mile, mile radius that are a similar 
uh, vintage and similar amenities, right? You can't compare something that has a giant pool and, you know, workout gym and all those things to one that doesn't. But if you can find something similar to compare, then if they can do it, you can do it, right? That's pretty simple. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, I might take one more question just at the, I appreciate, I think we've transitioned more into the underwriting and the, and the criteria <laughs> for sponsorship. I feel like we've, we've started to move down that, that road a little bit here. And, and I love your, your presentation that if you, if you see what the property's at, and you figure out that you can go backwards into the Trinity over the next six to 12 months, it's a good deal kind of concept, right? That's kind of what you're, you're mapping out. Yeah. So that's right. I, I, guess I also want to say before we change subjects is that, you know, Charmaine and, and Ari mentors and some of you are mentor students. I mean, they do still, you know, try to preach that, you know, that, that that's kind of the gold standard, but you know, they also want to keep you safe right so they don't want to get you in any risky deals so it's kind of like talking to an attorney you know a lawyer right and the, you know you say well you know hey can i do this and he you know his it's his duty to say i wouldn't right but now it becomes up to you whether you want it whether it's a good risk or a bad risk right and that way if it if it does mess up it's not his fault but you know legally he or or a, an accountant the same way right on your taxes kind of thing so i just want to say that then they they do a great job and uh, uh, as far as helping to protect their students nice yeah i appreciate that that's i appreciate you saying that that's a very important point and and yeah we'd love the re mentor um um program and and at the same time uh i've seen you at a lot of different events mike i've been to uh you know different ones in different parts of the country and there there you are again at those too so i think that's an important well, it's important to branch out and to, and to hear what you know what what the different groups are are advocating for. And so, maybe along those lines, what what do you think's you know? I know you don't have a crystal ball, or, and and you don't know what's going to happen. But what are you feeling about about the times now and 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 interest rates? And you know, what's your sort of perspective on that whole issue? Yeah, I know that's a, that's definitely a a question that uh, is burning for everybody. My personal opinion, I mean, I, I feel that I, I feel that we're good. I feel that it uh, I think this year should still be a very strong year. I mean, of course, you know, this whole war thing is, you know, got everybody all up, up, up in arms. No, no pun intended. But um, they, uh, you know, I think they'll figure all, all of that out. And, you know, but apartments are everybody needs a place to live. Right. And they really do. And that's also another thing I love about the value add kind of uh, proposition or uh, uh, because if you you know like on this Lubbock property right we underwrote this to for for the value add component and we did the the rent comps and we know that the other units down the road are getting these rents right we're not we're not underwriting it like it, the market is going to go crazy like it's been going we're just you know we're just basically bringing it up to market rent and then we have like a, maybe a three percent per year uh rent bump going forward but uh, so if the if the economy was to go through a, you know a tough time and which you know it probably will I mean uh, inflation is going through the roof and interest rates can go up and you know all of these things but again people need still need a place to live and um, you know by renovating these units we're not asking anything more than you know what they're asking down the street so we still feel that we can get that and if it flattens if the market flattens. Um, but, you know, in a short time, we're cash flowing really well and investors are being paid. Everybody's being paid. So if it's not the right time to sell, we just hold for a longer period and and ride it out. You know, even in this vast last downturn that we had, which was horrendous, it didn't really last that long. If you think about it, right, it was you know, really three years. It was kind of back, you know, sailing, sailing again. So as long as we're all cash flowing, we can ride it out. Yeah. So okay. I'm, I don't know if I answered the question, but I, I, I think my projection is I think that uh, um, at the worst, I think we're going to see some flat uh, 
you know, economy, you know, going forward, and that may be for a while. But not, I don't think it's going to happen this year. Okay. Let's see. At, we're at um, 918, uh, New York time. <laughs> and uh, what we do is uh, rate the meeting. Um, we're not rating the speaker, but the meeting itself, because any, and making sure that anyone uh, any other questions that they may have. Okay. So, Darnell, what do you got? Ah. Yeah, he he said ten, but his mic's off. Yeah, ten. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> hey, drama ten. Okay. It's Max. Max, Max is a ten. Charmaine a ten. Okay, I'm I'm a ten also. I loved it. Awesome. Thank you. Nice. Came on. Well, I'm a uh, ten also because yeah, I think you guys are a great group. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And my wife's a 10 too. I'm just saying that for her. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I write it down, but uh, I'm a 10 also, like I said. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Then this uh, <laughs> um, Thank you so much, Mike and Christy. Thank you guys. Thank you. Excellent. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us on. It was a lot of fun. All right. Great thank, to you. Talk thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Pedro. Thanks for guest hosting. Good job, sir. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you. All right. Good night. Good night, yeah, everyone. Good night. Bye.